this is from Anne Boyer, who's a poet, and she was writing um, on her Substack about this current conjuncture. Mm-hmm. Oh, so she's around now. Yes. Great. <laughs> this is what she writes. She writes, These are the same types who say the only thing to fear is fear, which of course is not true, because fear educates our care for each other. We fear a sick person might be made sicker or that a poor person's life might be made more miserable. And we do whatever we can to protect them because we fear a version of human life in which everyone lives only for themselves. I am not the least bit afraid of this kind of fear, for fear is a vital and necessary part of love. And this fear, which I love, is right now particularly justified because we have a pernicious virus that travels inside the healthy to sicken and kill the already fragile, and therefore requires that the healthy and strong deepen their moral commitments for the benefit of the sick and the weak. We must learn to do good for the good of the stranger now. We now have to live as daily evidence that we believe there is value in the lives of the cancer patient, the elderly person, the disabled one, the ones in unthinkable living conditions, crowded and at risk. We also must engage in large-scale social distancing. The way social distancing works requires faith. We must begin to see the negative space as clearly as the positive, to know that what we don't do is also brilliant and full of love. We must face such a strange task here to come together in spirit and keep a distance in body at the same time. We can do it. I am writing this because I want the good in us to break through the layers of hateful nonsense we've been drowning in. I think we can be good, but we also must prepare for an amplification of evil's evil. The time when the invisible becomes visible is at hand. <laughs> 